Hey guys, Templar here. Now today I'm going to be talking about one of my newest weapons, and that would be this, the Celtic War Spear. Now, this is uh, a spear from Arms and Armor. Now, I bought this one because of the fact I believe this would be perfect for my Celtic arsenal and pretty much my Valhalla arsenal. Yes, I do believe in going to, well, serving with the gods, if you could say. So, yeah. Now, this is a really cool spear. In fact, uh, this spearhead is a lot more noticeable or more, uh, well, ordinary compared to other Celtic spears, especially this one. Now, this Celtic spear is a Latin spearhead, and those ones are extremely gruesome on the battlefield. Why? Here's the thing. Uh, the Celtic spear itself, like this one, is mainly meant for thrusting. However, that's the thing. I can also use this for a two-meter long sword, of which the Celts of Germania, or the Germans, as the Romans put them, and in which how the Germans got their nick got their name and title would actually be because of the spear. Land of the Spearmen. So yeah, that's really cool. Now, here's the really messed up thing about this spearhead though. This spearhead in general is a really gruesome one because this one, as you can see with the wave-like pattern, in the process, if you were to say accidentally miss the said person, here's the thing, it doesn't matter if you missed. If it was like say an exposed a uh, part of flesh, say like the human artery, like down in my leg for example, and I'm like fully decked out, I am wearing mail, gambas and such, and in the process, say if like I was going for his leg and I missed, but yet I nicked him, here's the thing, that wave-like pattern can really do damage. How so? Well, there's enough damaging point onto that that could actually, well, uh, technically take off half my thigh. So. Yeah, I could probably die due to that bleeding. So that is probably the most terrifying Celtic weapon in there. But I decided to go for a normal one because this felt normal to me. And unfortunately, though that one version was backordered, so it will take a long while for it to come around here to the States. But yeah, this one is incredibly accurate to what the Celtic War Spear would have looked like, especially if I did a thrusting design into it. Now, the reason I love Celtic spears a lot more than Roman or Greek or even uh, Etruscan or Carthaginian hoplite spears is for one big reason. The Celtic spear is shorter, it's this size, while hoplite spears were mm, about this big. Yeah, you can see the problem with that. This would make it unwieldy. This one though is incredibly light. I can move in, out, in and out. Extreme incredibly quickly, especially if I'm going to hit my target, like stab, stab, right behind his shield. This perfectly keeps me in motion. Now the thing is, the incredible part about this type of spearhead is, the really cool part about it, is the fact that it's so light. In fact, if none of y'all know about Celtic history, the Celts were the masters of the Iron Age in Europe. And doing so, they created great weapons. And as well, they could actually carry over at least three spears while they're fighting. So in other words, these type of spears, they would actually kept one in reserve for thrusting inward. So yeah, that's a really cool part. Now, that's the thing. There would be, they would carry at least three of these. In other words, two of these they would throw. One of these they would keep for thrusting. So just imagine if I came at you like so. <laughs> I came at you with one spear, two spear, and next thing you know, I'm on top of you. That's the scary part. In fact, I can just, well, <laughs> uh, take a spear from my arsenal from my shield area, because I would normally carry it on with my shield. Now, yes, I am wearing it using my round shield, not my uh, oval shield, but yeah, I think I prefer this a little bit more, because it's slightly lighter. In doing so, I can easily carry it with the spear. In other words, I could carry two on this hand, use one on this hand, in doing so, I can just keep rushing at you, like, ah! In the process, I can then throw this spear while I'm running at you. That is terrifying! In fact, this is probably the most terrifying thing about the Celtic warrior. In fact, these spears, they didn't need a butt. If y'all don't know what a butt is, a butt would go on the very bottom of a spear. This one doesn't need it. 
This is terrifying enough. And the scary part is, I can then, well, close it up like this to actually use it as a small sword. In the process, that is terrifying. And then I can even... <laughs> you can see my point. This is horrifying. Especially, just imagine if you were in the front ranks of a Roman legion, seeing this come at you every time. And it just gets bigger and bigger and so on. And in fact, I still have full control at the very bottom end. And actually, I can easily do my stabs, cuts, or the hard part. But yeah, this is horrifying enough. And this already came sharpened. This came from uh, Arms and Armor, which is really cool. Now, the thing is, the reason I like these Celtic Spears also is because when it gave them control, there was a really big reason. Such as for Celtic Cavalry. How so? Here's the thing. Imagine I'm a Celtic warrior on a chariot or, uh, say, a horse. In doing so, here's the thing. When we normally think of how uh, cavalry was done back then, normally we think of the Roman Legionnaire or the Roman Auxiliary Unit riding in on his horse and in the process using his spear like, well, this, which, I mean, in general, is how a Celtic warrior would have done it, but he wouldn't have done it like this. In truth, he would have done it something else. He would have done it with two hands. In fact, he would have had a long enough distance as well, he could have actually done what they call a cutting thrust attack. Now, what is that? Well, it's kind of like this. Imagine, say, I'm going to go for this guy here, but in truth, I'm going to go for this guy here. So what I do is a cut thrust. So in other words, it was this zoo. And in doing so, I can actually take someone's head off. In fact, it was stated that during the time of the Gallic Wars and including the Roman invasion of Britain, that the Celts of Britannia and Gaul actually did this in such a favorable manner that it moved with them. And as well, it's even stated that legionnaires' heads were cut clean off with the spearhead. Yeah, that is kind of scary. Now, imagine it like this, though. For example, if this actually did happen, they would have actually strapped the shield on, like this. Kind of like something like this. However, it would have been a big oval shield or round shield that would normally be down to the thigh. However, this is actually what the Crusaders would have done during the early years of the Crusades. They would have held the spear with two ends, two hands, especially during the um, Norman invasion of England of 1066 especially at the Battle of Hastings, when we see them go in, they, what they do is they hold it, especially on the Bayou Tapestry, they actually see, you can actually see some of them doing it like this. Now, that is horrifying enough, but the Celts were the first one to have done that, especially with their chariot warfare, especially dangerous and terrifying if you see this coming in at you. I do love these spears a lot, and there are a lot of Celtic spearheads. Let me get this off for y'all. Eh. Woo, nearly stabbed my own foot. <laughs> uh, anyways. But yeah, these spears are incredibly light. They're incredibly effective. I can actually just move in, stab, stab, stab. I can easily just use it as a blocking formation. I don't even need a shield most of the time. In fact, Celtic warriors are even stated to have trusted this as their shield. Also, especially when Run Roman Javelin actually came at the said Celtic warrior, what he did is he deflected the Javelin and actually charged in. That is kind of terrifying. To say the least, uh, but yeah. Celtic warriors and Celtic warfare itself was incredibly gruesome. And as well, this already came sharpened, I'm just uh, sharpening it a little bit more, and this is already sharp enough to actually probably skin a Roman. <laughs> I know, you can't make a joke like that, but you gotta admit, they, the Romans deserve it. <laughs> Anyways guys, hopefully you like this. <clears throat> hopefully you found this helpful about this type of spear. If y'all want to buy one, I will leave links down below if y'all want to take a look at them, as well as the other Celtic spearheads in history. As well, guys, also check out our Facebook and also check out the description below of where I will talk more about this stuff. Anyways, guys, hopefully you found this helpful and hopefully to see you in the next video. See ya!